Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Sanjoki markers, professional art markers. Um, we shall see. We shall see. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the size of this box. This is a 120 set, and Sanjoki reached out to me and asked if I would like to try their markers. And I was curious because I had actually seen them on Amazon earlier the same day that they reached out to me. I didn't, I've never heard of this brand of markers until I saw them on Amazon. And uh, I was actually planning a marker class and I was just looking to see what was out there for brush tip markers that were affordable. And I saw an 80 set and I'm like, wow, that looks really good because the price was really low. I'm thinking it was probably around $40 for 80 brush tip markers. Um, and then uh, they offered to send me these. So I'm like, that's pretty serendipitous. So it's packaged pretty well. The box actually came from Amazon in a larger box. Um, not too much larger and a little bit of like air pillow things. So uh, it came out in really good, in really good shape. I didn't even look at the stuff on the box yet. Um, the little latch even has one of those little cling peely um, protectants on there. So you won't have a scratch to buckle. Not that I'm not really that worried about if, if the, I'm more worried about the, how the product performs, but um, it's a Sanjoki art markers color, the life. And let's see, let's see what we got. Let's look at this case. It looks like you could put like a strap on there. That's nice. I always look for a nice um, compact, oh, that Velcro is pretty strong. Um, a nice compact case because I like to go to friend's house and um, and work on projects. And I, I don't like to bring a lot of really, um, uh, cumbersome things so bringing a set like this where they can stay in the cases is nice all right oh looks like we got some goodies in here let's see sanjoki starts from japan aims to create remarkable experiences wait a minute where is this made let me look at the box here i'm assuming it was made in china yeah made in china uh, they were talking about japan in there i'm like oh wow that would be cool i'm not expecting these to have the japanese style nibs just because you just can't get them down for that price even just to buy replacement nibs of the Japanese style uh, foam rubber nibs are a couple of dollars a piece so I, I wouldn't expect a marker to be less than a dollar and have those nibs on them. So anyway there's a uh, brochure. The color range, okay so this shows you the 80 color range and the 120 color range if you're you can look there to see if, if you're deciding between the two. It looks like there's some good pastels in the 80 color range. I'm always looking for that because the pastel tones and your earth tones, um, those are really handy for blending and also handy for doing a variety of subject matter, whether you want to do wildlife or people or um, or what have you. So the 80 range does look fairly good. Um, it looks like the 120 range has an expanded version of grays. I see a lot of warm grays here. Um, I see a couple cool grays. Uh, my preference, honestly, if I was to design a set of markers, I would do a full range of cool grays, like cool gray zero zero to cool gray zero nine and a black, um, because I find the cool grays to be a little bit more useful. But I do notice a lot of these markers that run on the Shinhan color numbering system have will have um, some green grays, some warm grays, some blue grays, some cool grays. They put a little bit of everything. Uh, I think it would be much more useful for one of these sets to just do a full range of cool grays because you can layer up over them and then maybe add warm grays because um, the cool gray seems to look fine under everything. Um, warm grays can look a little brownish or a little muddy, but um, I guess this is trying to appeal to more... Um, uh, more customers. So here we've got um, different uh, frequently asked questions here. Um, the translation's a little bit, uh, you know, you can, you can make out what they're saying. It's, you know, you can tell that it's obviously translated text. Um, guarantee we are making this product a 100% satisfaction one. So if you don't like this product at all or simply change your mind, please contact us for a return or refund. Well, that's nice. Um, and just some tips on getting the most from your um, your markers. Also, just do not put it in your mouth. Well, yes, I obviously also would recommend, you know, markers to any child that's at an age where they're putting things in their mouth. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Just gives you some more information. I'll read that on my own just because that could be quite boring. Um, these, oh, look at this. You know what? I like this. I saw that the, the last set of markers from... Um, 
Artify had these in there, and they're swatch stickers for you to put on your markers. So I did that once. Um, well, actually, I'll show you my my markers that are my open stock markers that I keep in that rack behind me. If you ever watch Sat Chat, you see the big marker display. So what I did was I actually took sticker paper, I punched out circles, and I colored them with the markers because like pro markers didn't have a very good index on them and neither did Prismacolors. Um, so I did that for those markers so I could see exactly what the colors were. And if they fade, which they do eventually, then I just, you know, I just recoat them. And, uh, and it works great because I know exactly what color I'm getting versus like a printed label or a paint chip. So um, they've got stickers here for you to do that exact same thing. You color the sticker, you can stick it to the marker. I like that. I think that's a really nice attention to detail. I'm hoping these are good markers because the price is good and uh, the case is good. So that's good. Now, there, obviously there's some packaging. Um, having a plastic wrap like this may annoy some people, but um, it's going to keep your markers in storage at the store from drying out. And um, it's much better to have waste like this than to have a whole chunk of markers go dry or go drier or, ha or have them be used up faster so you have to replace them faster if they didn't include them. So, hey, you know what? Look at this. This would be a really awesome little travel palette. You could even cut it up if you just need to like, if you just want something to fit in like an Altoids tin, you could cut off that and use that for like Altoids tin palettes. Hold on, I got an Altoids tin. Let me check. Let's check that out. Wouldn't that be cool? Hold on. I've got a little Altoids tin right here. I got one of these uh, Sean's 3D printed palettes in there. I'm wondering. Oh, I think it will fit. Let's try it, guys. Oh my gosh. You know what? Because that's what... I like it when I can reuse my packaging. Can we do six in there? Let's see if we can. I wonder if, you know what, I wonder if six going one way is smaller than six going the other way. I don't know. Because definitely six going that way, I could get that in Altoids tin. Let's see if this one, we can. Crafty MacGyver, I'm a crafty MacGyver. I like to make mini palettes out of things. I've got more palettes than I need. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at that! Oh guys, how cool! How cool is that? And look how many you can make! How many can we make? We can make one, two, three, four, five times three, fifteen. We can make fifteen mini Altoids palettes with this. Okay, so I feel like that's just, that's worth the price. that oh my gosh I gotta save Altoids tins now that's cool oh my gosh that's awesome or like you can look at whatever tins you have because if it's smaller than this you just can cut it out to fit whatever the tin you have is if you had a big Altoids tin do I have a big Altoids tin oh I do oh guys okay let's see how this is another one of the Sean's 3d printed tins but let me just see guys you could get you could get two big Altoids tin pans, uh, palettes, and one mini, and then have you'd have a little bit left over. You'd have like a four, a quad left over. Guys. Okay, save your tins, man. That's cool. All right, I'm, I'm psyched with that. Don't throw that away, guys. If you're gonna throw it away, send it to me. Don't throw it away. <laughs> Make some palettes with it. Just put a piece of white paper underneath it, or, <clears throat> yeah, just put a piece of, pe or, no guys, here's what you do. <laughs> what you do is you take your Altoids tin and you spray paint it with Rust-Oleum white, high gloss enamel, and you let it dry. And then when you put that in, it's going to be like a white tin. And you paid nothing. I mean, you bought the markers, but this is free. That's free gift with purchase. They didn't even know they were sending you a free gift with purchase, but they were. Actually, they do, they do send some. Let's see what the actual free gifts with purchase are. So we've got this... Um, uh, oh, these are great. These are for putting in your sketchbook. So you're doing a... Let me demonstrate. Is a, I'm sure you guys are bright enough to figure this out on your own, but... So like I have a little piece of scrap paper in here I use because this one didn't have one. But um, so you're la di da, see? I didn't have one, that's what happened. So what you're supposed to do is you put your plastic in there. And actually the nice thing about this is if you're doing colored pencils, like I like to put colored pencil over my sketches sometimes. And if you do that, then um, it's not gonna dent the page underneath because it's thick enough. It's, thick, it's a nice one. It's a thick enough one. It's kind of like those uh, those frosted boards, the cutting boards, the flexible cutting boards from Dollar Tree. That's what this reminds me of. That's nice. Uh, 
Oh, that's great. So that goes under there. You do your artwork. Any ink spills gets on the plastic, which you can wipe off with a little alcohol. Um, and then you don't mess up your next page. I approve. Thank you. I like that. Good, good touch. Um, this is, oh, we got a swatch. Look at that. We don't even have to make our own swatch sheet. Although I will say, I recommend making your own swatch sheet on the paper you typically use because the colors can vary. So let's just, let's just, for example, let's take my marker paper here that I use as a little, it was like I was drawing something, but it didn't come out good. So I just used, and I, then I was just doodling and then I used the, uh, so I saved this. Um, so let's say number 16. Where's number 16 on our thing? Coral pink. Oh, I like that color. I love coral. Okay, coral pink. So I'm going to fill in our coral pink. Let's see how it looks on marker paper. So it just looks, you know, it looks a little bit more fresh and vibrant on marker paper. I don't know if that's even going to show on camera, but um, it's a good idea to do your swatches on the paper that you typically use just so you have a really good... Um, a really good example. I hopefully that doesn't bleed through. Uh, huh. They feel nice. They feel like an Ohuhu nib. Uh, I think they're probably very similar, but you know, we'll get into the testing of those in a little bit, but that's nice. This kind of feels like cardboard, um, maybe a cardstock, but it's better than nothing. I mean, cause you really can't go by the, the caps on any markers. This from this color, it's really not accurate. This looks way more corally and pinky. That looks way more orangey. So, you know, and you gotta let it dry. Reds can be a little deceiving, but uh, so that's nice. Comes with a color swatch and it comes with a professional marker book. Shoot, glad it didn't come with an amateur marker book. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see what kind of paper is in this. If it's a cardstock or a marker paper. It feels like it's fairly thick. It's thicker than a lot of marker papers. It feels like it's coated on the top side and a little matte on the back side. So you typically would use the uh, the smoother side. And a marker paper has a coating on it to conserve your ink and keep it from um, <clears throat> from fading through. So that's nice. So if you have nothing and you've never done markers before, you've got something to work on. So it'll be really fun to uh, <clears throat> to try this out and see how that works. So let's open up the rest of our. Let's open up our, let's let's release our free palettes and our markers into the world. I am so psyched about that. That's funny. I've got, I got 120 new colors of markers and I'm, and I'm more excited about the packaging. It's like, you know, when you, when you have like little, little kids and you have toddlers and they have more fun unwrapping the Christmas presents than they do actually like playing with the, with the presents. They have more fun with the boxes that the presents came in. I mean, look at this. This is awesome. I am so keeping these. These are going to be my, um, my test palettes. And it was funny because I bought like, I think, I don't know if it was at Sam's Club or Martin's or something. I got like a big pack of Altoids once and I was like putting them in like gift baskets and stuff like that for Christmas time and making little ornaments with them. It's like, man, I wish I had those tins back. <laughs> I could be like your grandmother and be like, okay, I want my dish back. Here's a casserole. Give me my dish back, which is just common sense. And quite frankly, it's just courtesy. <laughs> All right, here you go. I want the tin back. <laughs> This is so cool. All right, I am psyched about that. That's awesome. This one has a little distortion on the edge. It's meant to keep the marker safe. It's not meant to be a free palette. So what can you do? What can you do? So I feel like the packaging is useful. I feel like the case is nice because then you don't have to go and buy another case if you like to store your markers in cases. If you are handy and you want to do something a little more permanent for your home for storing your markers, all you have to do is make like a wooden box that would fit these. And then you could have a stand that you could just set on your table. Um, but this I think has, it looks like it might fold up so that you can display your markers right in front of you. You wanna keep your markers horizontal. So when you're not using them, you wanna flip this case on its side. But I think if I remember from the Amazon listing that this will, oh yep, see that Velcro there? This will fold back. I don't know, actually, could you see that? There's Velcro here. This will fold back on itself and oh that's nice look at that so i can have this all here where i can see it even you can see it if i was doing a tutorial you'd even be able to see those markers and then i can work on my piece so that that's pretty nice so let's just do a little uh, let's let's try some of these out and see 
how they do. We'll use a paper here so we can see how that is. I'm gonna put the, I will put the little bleed proof thing in there. It's sized for that. So this paper probably does have a little bit of bleeding issue. Not a huge deal, uh, a lot of papers do. I like this case. I like this because it doesn't take up a ton of space if I'm like working at the kitchen table or at the coffee table, which quite frankly, I do that quite a bit. Um, if you have, um, if you have markers already, I'm gonna hold this at an angle so hopefully you can see the tip on the paper. If you have some budget markers already, you're probably pretty used to this color range. So I am seeing the tip of the marker get a little bit lighter as I'm working and the tips do feel a little bit softer than the Ohuhu, just from this, uh, this color here. Let's take a look at the chisel tip. It's fine. Let's try it. Let's just try a few colors at random and see how they are. Ooh, we got a neon. I'm sniffing it. Sometimes I, I've had like Ohuhu markers where the neons in the set were not were not uh, alcohol. They were like highlighters. And that was weird. Now I could see the tip bleaching out a little bit, which honestly, that's not a great sign. There's quite a bit of flexibility and these are quite juicy. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to do an illustration with these to get an idea of, um, of how they're gonna perform. Well, that's a pretty pastel lavender. And of course, this is paper I'm not used to. This is a, a different brand. This doesn't feel like marker paper in use, but um, you don't have to use them. And I'm gonna reorganize these because they're not in a very, they're not even in numerical order. They're just very random. It might be because, um, Maybe the different sets they sell. They might have like certain packs that go in every set. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, Cause I'm not sure. Would that be 80, 40? Yep. Yeah, this probably. You know what? It's probably 40 per. You no, know, that wouldn't make sense because they they have all the grays together. I'm just wondering if it's like there's one of these. If you bought a set, you wouldn't get like one of these chunks. If you bought the 80 cent, maybe one of these chunks wouldn't be there. Cause it must be 40 per. Um, per container that yeah that's how it works out um, let's just do a quick blend I think I'll do greens because greens tend to blend better uh, let's see what we have that's a very dark one. Oh, that one looks pretty dark too I just want to find something with a little bit of a oh that's even darker I need something lighter the caps are not a perfect match. So that's something that you really are gonna to wanna to put your stickers on them, I think. All the colors are seem to be quite dark. I need a light green. But you know what, sometimes the colors, like it'll show a yellow, but it's actually a green, oh, that's green. Um, let's look at this one. That's lighter. So is it this one that looked kinda of like? That's not the same undertone. I'm gonna put back the other one that was like that. Okay, so maybe these two, let's see how these blend together. I'm just gonna do an area that's the lighter color. I'm gonna do a little bit of the dark. Very juicy though. And then I'm gonna blend them together. They seem to blend fine. Those colors did anyway. Maybe do some browns. Browns are, I'm just looking for something where I have enough of a variation of colors that are, I have the same undertones. I don't know where I got these. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna reorganize these colors anyway. Um, let's see, 101 Potato Brown. <laughs> I wonder if that's what it's called. It's like, cause in everything it's called, oh, they're calling it yellow ochre, but it seems like potato brown was like <laughs> this color. And it was always when you go dry first because it was the most useful um, wildlife and, and neutral color that you had. That one's really light. Um, let's see what 100 is. That's dark. Okay, can we do 100 to 101? This is the, the color, the color naming is probably gonna be a little confusing. Is that lighter than? Uh, might be. Uh, let's try 102. Oh, that's quite dark. Yeah, it's like, okay, 102 is really dark. 100 is 
medium and then 101 is light. Let's try that. Sometimes I like to do black to white. Oh, we did get a little spray there. Opening the cap. And there's a collar, there's a little gray stripe on the end that's got the uh, that's got the brush tip. Oh, they blend really well, probably because of how much ink is coming out. Um, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to reorganize these markers. I'm going to do an illustration with them. And then I'll come back here on camera for the review for final thoughts. And I'll post the illustration um, in time lapse some other time. Um, on my YouTube channel, so you'll be able to see that as well. But yeah, the blending seems to be pretty good. I did see some feathering there, but it could just be because the markers are so juicy. Um, yeah, so let's do that and we'll see you back. It'll be a couple seconds for you and it'll be, who knows, for me. <laughs> so I've been swatching these. Um, I decided that I was actually gonna go put them in in uh, number order because they're pretty much grouped by color families except for the pastels, so I think that's what I'll do, especially since the swatch is in that order. Um, and I'm, I'm coloring in the stickers as well, so I'll show you how those go. Now something that just kind of came, that I noticed, is that for numbers that look different, that are different numbers upside down or right side up, there's no line underneath them, so like six, vivid pink. I first saw this and I thought, oh here we go, this is vivid pink. Um, then I'm like, that looks, then I look what color is nine and that says pale pink. So I decided to just draw, take a Sharpie and draw a line underneath the six just to, just to, you know, help me decide, like see what it is. But then it's really going to be helpful to have this swatch on there. And also obviously the cap looks different, but that could be a little confusing um, if you're looking at a swatch and you're not careful of which pink you're grabbing. Now I'm putting my, my sticker on the same point of each marker. I'm putting it around the end that's the brush tip end, just because that's probably the end I'll be using. Unless they fray down, then I'll use a chisel end more, but that's how that's how I do it. You could also do it lengthwise, but I like this because you can see it from all angles, so I go around the barrel, but you can do whatever you like. And it'll help me put it put these in um, the case with the brush tips facing out and I'll just it'll just be a little bit quicker for me to get the right cap rather than having to look for the picture. But that's just me. I'll know that band of color will be much easier for me to see. Um, so that's that's, that's just something I wanted to mention. Just uh, maybe put a line under, um, you know, the six or the nine, depending. And then I'm not sure if there's bigger numbers like, well, you know what? I think there's, there might be some, some other numbers. No, the, the scales don't go that high. So I don't think they'll be I don't think there'll be maybe 66 and 99 if there's a there's a 99 bronze is there a 66 uh yeah there's a 66 baby blue but that's not too bad because they, they, those colors are so different but having two pinks that could be um confused i think just to just to be aware of all right i'm going to continue swatching and organizing well i finished swatching these and i've done a few artworks with them and now we're going to uh compare them to some other markers that i feel are quite similar to these sanjoki markers so this is what the full range of colors look like this is the 120 set we have some um we have a good range of reds we have a pretty good range of yellows greens blues purples browns um and then we've got a decent array of of uh, the grays. Um, we've got some fluorescent colors, which can be handy for boosting some other colors. Personally, I'd probably rather have some more standard colors than uh, fluorescents, but that's just me. Everybody's different. They're different from the other colors, and you can definitely blend them in. Um, we've got a few really, really pale earth tones that could be good for highlights on portraits or on um, wildlife. Uh, we've got a few warm grays. We've got a nice range of warm grays. Unfortunately, we only have a couple. We only have three cool grays, but the blue grays could be used in with the cool grays to expand that. I wish it was um, a full range of cool grays. That's my preference anyway, but I, I really don't have any complaints over this um, this color range. I was able to, I've been able to pretty much mix all the colors I want, blend all the colors I want for a variety of different projects. I even did a card, but I've already given the card away. So I will have a video on that card because I made it for my nephew, but I needed to mail it. Um, so I have a photo of it, but I don't have the uh, the actual artwork anymore. And it worked great, even on a smaller scale. I was able to control the ink on these and um, 
and color just fine. So let's look at the artwork. So this was done on the Sanjoki paper that comes in the kit. It comes with a um, Tony sheet pad, as I mentioned, and the little um, plastic thing fits right in here. Now something you wanna, I want to make you aware of with this, with this plastic with a thinner paper like this, the ink will seep through the paper and get on the plastic. You wanna clean that off between projects because if you've got ink on there and then you go put it underneath your next piece of paper and you start coloring, that if you have like a light color, it's gonna go through your paper. It's gonna activate that ink that's on your uh, plastic and it's gonna leach it up through your paper. And so I actually had some uh, pink like come up through and I had to make some um, some chocolate drizzles in there because I ended up with some splots of pink and I'm like where is that coming from and it was because the um, there was some ink on that plastic and it leached through so just make sure you clean that just with like a I just put a little rubbing alcohol wipe it down and you're good to go um, so this is the paper that comes with it I think it, it did feather a little bit like it is a little bit more um, I would say bleedy, not as much as like plain copy paper would be, but it's not as crisp as a lot of marker papers. But that said, free with purchase, it it's it's fine. It blends fine. It works fine. It's not my favorite paper, but it's certainly uh, fit for purpose. And you could do 20 drawings on here, get your feel for those markers while you're trying to figure out what you want to buy for paper. I like that. It's decent. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's it's uh, it's mediocre, but it's fine. You know. Uh, so that's done on that paper. This is done in my Artix Mixed Media sketch pad. I really like this paper. If you can find it, sometimes it goes out of stock, but um, I, it came from Amazon. Actually, the artist com Artix company sent me that, but um, I have done other alcohol marker illustrations on here, and I just really like it because it's nice and thick and uh, has a nice weight to it. And um, I've used a variety of different brands of markers in here, and it works really well with pretty much everything I've, I've tried. So um, so anyway, this was done with the Sanjoki markers and a little bit of pencil. And this was probably the most pure marker piece that I've done. Um, I did use a little bit of gel pen on that highlight there, and I used some graphite pencil here. This was for the prompt eagle, so I drew a, an eagle using an eagle pencil to draw a scene that had some eagles flying in the distance. So I know, meta, right? And then last but not least, I used the markers on Strathmore Mixed Media Toned Tan Paper. And I love this um, I love this technique because then you can go in with some colored pencil or pen and you can get a really, really contrasty bright highlight spot. So that's what I did there. But what, what I wanted to do this for was because I wanted a background where I had to um, put a lot of ink down because I was just concerned that these markers being so juicy right off the bat and the tips being so flexible, I was like, are these gonna run dry as soon as I start to color a large area? And they did not. They had a really great ink flow and um, didn't have any problems with um, with any uh, any use of this. And I actually really like the nibs on these. They have more give, and we're, I'm gonna show you a comparison in a second. They have more give than the other fiber nibs, but, uh, and they're reversible. So you could pull them out and put them back in. I, I showed, I think I showed you at the beginning of this video on the blender. I'm gonna try it on a really pale color. Let's see, I'll do it on the powder pink. I don't recommend you doing this until you're ready to flip the nib around. So what can happen? with um with markers is that they can get kind of um worn down after a while uh not so much if you're using smooth paper which you usually are with marker paper but with markers but maybe you're using some textured paper because you like it uh so then what you could do is take a paper towel pull out this nib and you can see that the nib is is double-ended so these are like the ohuhu the artify and the artix nibs you can put them back in the other way around if your nib starts to get frayed so hopefully the camera's focusing on that i'm not sure if it is or not i just don't want to drop it on my artwork but um it's just a great way to double the life of your marker and i just did it with a light color so i wouldn't stain my fingers now i wouldn't recommend doing that too much because you know each time you do that look you're wasting some ink and you know you could damage the nib so just wait until it, if it starts to fray if and when it starts to fray you can flip them around um, so I put the markers in, like I mentioned in the clip before, I put them back in, in the number order because I thought that was a pretty good, um, that was a pretty good arrangement color-wise. And yeah, you'll notice that the range here is similar to other brands. So what I did was I grabbed two markers from Sanjoki. I grabbed two from Artix, I grabbed two from Ohuhu, and I grabbed two from Artify, and we're gonna compare those and how they blend. And I did my best to get similar colors. So let's start off. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take this. This is Nina Classic Crest cardstock. This is what I use if I'm card making. It's the 80 pound. It's a wonderful 
Um, it's a wonderful cardstock. I'm going to draw four box, four rectangles so that we can practice our blending and we'll see how they compare. That way I can do an apples to apples comparison. So all of these markers have a brush end on one end and a chisel on the other. Um, the Sanjoki is the cheapest at 37 cents a marker, in America anyway. And then the other ones are probably closer to, um, oh, I would say 78 cents to $1 a marker, depending on what size set you get. So we'll start off with Sanjoki, then we'll go to Artix, then Ohuhu, and then Artify. And the reason I'm doing Artix first is because it actually uses the same color number. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and I think I am going to, um, I am going to set my focus so that it doesn't go out of focus on me. I'm going to start with the, with the Sanjoki here in the first block, the first box. I'm using 43 and 48, 43 being my dark, 48 being my light. And we're just going to do kind of like a basic feather blend. We're going to see how the nib feels nice and juicy. It has good response. And we'll go into the lighter color. These colors are fairly close together, so we shouldn't have too many issues. It's a bit of a jump, but not too bad. And I could have primed it, but I thought I would just see how it does on its own first. Go back in with our darker. You can see how much ink is in these markers, how it just kind of puddles up there on the surface. You can also just kind of go over the middle part. Get a little blending there. I think that looks pretty good, actually. And I could work over the darker part too if I wanted a smoother blend. Now next, and it, we'll let it dry. So also I will just do some, um, some examples with the uh, marker so we can go on the tip, get some fine lines. This is a lot of good flexibility to it. But it's, it is hard to get a really fine line with a brush tip. If I need to do a sharp edge, I generally will go to the chisel tip for that. All right, you can kind of see it blending out there. Hopefully it shows up on camera. We're getting a nice blend. The inks just kind of uh, are, are melding really nicely. So next we have Artix. We're using the exact same colors, 43 and 48, because these go on the same, the uh, Artix ones go on the same colorway. And I know it's not going to be in focus if I lift it up because I set the focus, but it goes in the same colorway as the, um, the Sanjoki. No marker caps, no markers have perfect matching caps. Actually, this does look a little bit cooler in color than the Sanjoki. This is less flexible. And I do find the Artix to feel a little bit drier. Oh yeah, these colors, even though it's the same number, they do seem to be quite, uh, quite a bit off. I thought those would be a little bit closer. Well, I might go ahead and grab um, a different color just so I have a fair, more fair representation. Yeah, you know what? That's not fair. I'm going to grab a different, a different marker. I'm going to try to match that a little bit better. Let me see. What do those colors look like? because I don't think that's fair. I don't, and I want to be really fair with these. Yeah, those are much closer. So I'm going to find a closer marker for that so that it is a little bit more fair. Alrighty, grabbed a color that I think would be a good mid-tone, um, be a little bit closer. This one right here, I'm going to see if I could actually just kind of use that to blend these two colors together. So we'll use a three color mix here, but then I'll go back and do the two. All 
right, so what I'm going to do is take Arctic's again. We'll do it again. So 43, do dark to light, just like we did on the Sanjoki. I just want to be fair. I don't want to be like, oh, these are the best markers and they're way cheaper. But, I mean, they are pretty good. All right, I just want to be as accurate as possible. These these are probably the closest I can get with the Artics, which is unusual because I have such a big selection of Artics. These are not as, um, as soft. The nibs are not as soft or flexible. But they're similar, you know, they're similar. There we go. So those two would be more of the comparisons. And we'll just let it dry and see if those uh, if the, that smooths out a little bit. Usually it does smooth out a little bit. Next we're gonna do is Ohuhu, and these numbers are completely different. So I just, um, although GY42 is, the, is um, one of the colors I used, and those are called 42, and that's called 42. So maybe there's a little bit of um, uh, comp comparability there. Oh, who, who is up to 300? Well, they will be up to 320 in, a, in their brush markers in November. So look, you can look forward to a review of those. I have no idea what those are going to cost. These two maybe aren't different enough. This is, these are, these oh, who's are fresh. Brand new from their new set. And these do not feel as juicy as the Sanjokis and not as flexible. But I do have more ink bleed outside of the lines with the um, with the Sanjoki, I think, because of how juicy they are. We'll blend back in. I'll go over that seam. That gave a really nice blend. So those are the Ohuhus. And last but not least, we have the Artifies, which I've actually, I've used these quite a bit. These are this set of Artify markers. Um, I got over a year ago, maybe two years ago. Anyway, over two, over over a year ago anyway. These have been upstairs on my um, shelf in front, of, in front of my desk in my bedroom where I do, um, I'm just kind of coloring for fun. Sometimes I do my Inktober stuff up there, but these have, these have been used quite a bit. So I don't expect them to be as juicy just because of the amount of use that they've that they've gotten. The tip on these feel a little bit like they're in between the flexibility and the juiciness of the Ohuhu and the um, Sanjoki. They're a little more juicy than I'd say the Ohuhu and the Artix, but not as juicy as the Sanjoki. And these were just the closest ones I could grab from the from the set that I had. And these have a little bit more odor, the Artifice. And I, I honestly, I wouldn't have even noticed that if I wasn't comparing these side by side. These, these out of the uh, four, these have the most, the most odor. But it's not enough to bother me, I mean, honestly. But it might be for you if you're really sensitive to those sort of things. Yeah, that's, that's got a really nice blend going already, I think. Oh, you know what, let's do our little I don't feel like I have as much, uh, well, I guess I can push it and get more of a broad tip, but it's not as smooth. It's a little bit choppy. I, that's not how I generally do not push my markers like that. Um, that one feels maybe a little bit more responsive. But we get really nice, we can get detail with our, with the edge of our chisel. Let's try the Ohuhu. I just feel these are a little bit more stiff. You can push on them, but I don't like to push on a fiber nib. It makes me feel like I'm gonna out, I'm gonna prematurely lessen its life. The chisel nibs are all about the same. I do use a chisel nib quite a bit, so I mean, I just want, I want good ink flow, you know? I would say Artix is very similar to both the Artify and the Ohuhu, and pretty close to the Sanjoki. Um, 
I feel like the Sanjoki just has a little bit more bend and responsiveness and more ink flow. So, uh, but I haven't noticed anywhere, even when I was doing a big background, generally you can kind of start to feel either the ink go dry on you or um, start to feel the, the nib get softer on you. And while these felt more flexible right off the bat, they did not feel, um, I, I did not feel like they got more flexible or mushy at all while I was using them. Um, and for the price, I really think that they are a great deal. So right now, these are around, as a time of recording, they're $43 and change on Amazon for 120 markers. That is a phenomenal deal because generally with your budget brush tip markers, they're around a dollar a piece. Things have started to drop a little bit, but not to the point of the Sanjoki, unless you find some that, I, like I tried one and it was by Coolio, I think was the name, and they were, they the ink did not flow very well. You'd start off fine, but then if you tried to do a background like this, I would get about this far down and it would be out of ink. There would be no blending. It was very frustrating. Um, if you were doing tiny images, it was fine, but any sort of artwork, you were just, the flow wouldn't keep up with you. But these, the flow absolutely kept up with me. Um, and the price is just, is just fantastic. And then you get the reusable case when you're done, which I think is wonderful. Now, if you already have a set of, uh, Ohuhu Artix Artify. Um, I mean, I feel like these would be a little bit of an upgrade, but not a, like you can get a larger selection of colors in Ohuhu um, and Artix. They both have larger color palettes, so that's something you might want to consider as well. And like if you already have a full set of Copics, these might not be interesting to you at all. However, I would say that if you are, you know, if you'd like to have a set to travel with, then these would be a really good option. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me switch my camera back to the non-focusing. Sorry about that. I had my locked focus so it wouldn't go out of <laughs> focus before. Um, but if you were a Copic user and you wanted to have a less expensive set for travel so you don't have to worry about losing them, um, I think this is an excellent, an excellent, um, opportunity. There we go. I'm like, why don't I have the right, the right spots? I love the stickers. I think that's a thoughtful addition. The only other markers I've seen do that would be the Artify on their enhanced markers. I notice they have little swatches, but not big enough to wrap all the way around. I love that. I did that to a set of my markers a few years ago, and I thought it was such a great idea. Um, so yeah, I love that the case, well, you can keep them organized in the case. You could set that on your shelf on its side for longevity. You can have it propped up at an angle when you're working. Um, it's nice. It's a, just a really nicely thought out, packaged, affordable set. The strap is great. I did try that out. It came right in the package. Um, I don't know if I showed you that in the first clip or not, but um, yeah, for a, a good selection of compact markers, I really don't think you can beat it. Um, now looking at the blends, I see it seems like the Sanjoki, the Ohuhu, and the Artify blended really well. I might have had the Artix, even with the closer colors, I still had a little bit of a, a challenge blending that. And I think it's just because the Artix markers, for whatever reason, seem a bit drier. I also find the Artix markers on a range um, seem a little bit like a shade or two lighter than a lot of the other markers that run on that same Shinhan range. Like maybe they've added more alcohol to the mix. Maybe they've diluted the ink a little bit. I'm not sure. It could be the, in the build of the marker, but... Um, for whatever reason, the Artix blended a, a little bit worse than the other three contenders there. I think they're all good markers, but um, I think with the price of the Sanjoki being what it is, and I really like, because I draw fast and I like that ink flow, um, yeah, I'd really recommend them. So actually, let's also get to the cons of these. There aren't many, but um, obviously there's not any open stock availability. Um, they don't sell refills, although you could use, like you could buy refills from Art and Fly that also runs on that same system or Shinhan Touch or even mix your own. That's what I do usually if I run out. I just grab the alcohol inks I have and mix my own. Um, I don't know why I'm holding those. That's not the right, that's not the right brand. Oh, I put, I put my Sanjokis away already. Um, one other thing I noticed is that when you uncap, and maybe I can get it to do it. I'm not sure. Sometimes when you uncap the markers, you will get some spray. I'll use a color that I haven't really used much. So, oh, they didn't do it this time. I don't think, but sometimes when you're uncapping these, the, um, they're so juicy that you get some drips. It tends to happen on reds a lot. Let's do a red. But that's happened to me with Ohuhu's as well. So, you know, it's not, it's not 
a specific to Sanjoki issue. I just notice it quite a bit. So try not to open up your markers right over your artwork. I always open my markers over my artwork, so I, unfortunately, it's a it's a bad habit I have. But you know, when you're when you're coloring, when you're drawing, it's just you want to grab your marker and go. But I did have that issue happen. I think you can maybe even see it, like just a little bit of red spatter there where I uncapped a red marker for the cherries and it just sprayed. Uh, but it wasn't that bad and. Um, I could definitely hide it within the uh, within the drawing, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, and, and that's it. So full range of 120 currently. I don't know if they plan on expanding, but that's what you're what you're limited to. That said, I found that I could I could blend a lot of colors. I had I I didn't struggle to find colors that would blend as I was doing the artwork and. I think they're goodbye. I really, I mean, what can you really complain about a $44, 43 and change set of markers that comes with a case that would probably cost that much that you can reuse after you're done? Um, it's really, it's really a great value. I have no idea if the prices will stay like this. I would say if you could get this, I, honestly, I mean, if you go onto Amazon Canada or you go to eBay, this set of markers is ranging anywhere from 90 to um, like $138. So, I think that as long as you're not paying more than a dollar a marker for these, it's a good price. So, I mean, even if it was $120, i would say it was fair, but I would rather pay $43, $44 for it, and I'd rather have you guys get that deal as well. I think this would be a wonderful gift for anybody getting into marker art, anybody that's maybe your grandkids are like, or your kids are like, oh, I want a, want a set of Copics, and so you're looking at your $50 budget for an art supply, and you're thinking, okay, I could buy you know, um, 10 Copic markers, or I could buy this set of 120, this is gonna get them much further because you're not gonna have enough markers to do an artwork. It takes a lot more markers than it does like tubes of paint to be able to blend and mix and create the colors that you want. Um, and then you could also determine whether they're really into alcohol markers before investing in Copics. Copics have a nicer brush nib. They've got the foam rubber nib. You're more expensive uh, your more expensive markers are going to have that. I'll show you real quick, actually, just so you can see the difference between what I'm talking about when I say a Copic brush nib. Let's grab this one right here. So a Copic marker, this is to show you comparatively. This is what a Copic marker looks like. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, this is a Copic sketch. There are Copic Chow markers. These run around $6 a marker. The Copic Chow, I think, are 3 or $4 a marker. Uh, so... I'll show you the difference here between the brush nibs. So the Copic brush nibs, maybe a little bit smaller, and then you've got a, a chisel nib on the other end, which is also a little bit smaller. So that's that's the difference there between the Copic sketch, which is the, the coveted Copic marker. People, when people want Copics, they want them for the brush nibs generally. And then um, I'm going to flip this over just to make it a little bit more clear. So this is the Sanjoki. It's pretty responsive, but you will find that a Copic will be generally more responsive. Now this is an older marker, so I'm hoping it's still... Actually, you know what? Now that I'm like using them side by side... I mean, these, defi these are definitely more flexible. But... I mean... I don't know. Th these are pretty flexible too. You can use them together too. That's the other thing that... Like, it's not like you've already committed to one brand of markers and you can never try another brand. These will all work well together. So let's just take these two markers. I'll show you what I mean. Let's see. How's that color? Okay, so this one's a little bit darker. You know, I can use my Copic markers and I can blend them together. This one probably could use a little re-inking too, so let's not compare a 10-year-old Copic that may or may not have been re-inked within the last year with a brand new marker. You know, that's not really fair either, but uh, hopefully that's in camera. But you can use them there. It's all it's all about the same ink. I mean, people will say, oh, no, Copic ink is so much better. I honestly do not notice a difference between the quality of inks of most markers. I find like the classic, the old Spectrum Noir, the first one inks they came out with to be a little bit more difficult to blend. But I think nowadays it's all very comparable and they all work together. So if you, I would start off with a set like this that's um, forty-three dollars, and then if you need more colors, buy a single color of this or that and add to it. And then, um, I mean, that's a really great way to get started for not a lot of money. Anyway, that's my opinion. 
you can let me know what you think in the comments below and I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like my reviews and until next time, happy crafting!